guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How you doing, Capricorn? Welcome, Cross Watchers. And for those of you who are brand new to the channel, welcome aboard. Come into the comments, say hi, let me know where you're tuning in from. I'll be sure to come back later on and say hi back. Yes, I do reply to comments. Um, I'm going to be pulling from Soul Helper Oracle just to activate the reading. So let's get a message here for those of you watching. Let's see this one right here. Oh, card 35, follow your vision. Never lose sight of what's really important. Yes, I love that. This, this card came in for another sign. I think very much earlier in this series. So um, yeah, it's in the ether here. Follow your vision and focus on what's important. Not very difficult for Capricorns uh, because you're very focused. You're usually um, very much focused on what it is you're trying to achieve in all aspects of life. So maybe just a helpful reminder. Okay, what I'm gonna do is pull the main spread, give you my general impressions, and then we'll get details um, from clarifiers as needed. Here we go. Overall energy for the reading. <laughs> Focus on this Ace of Cups here, my friends. Yeah, this um, for some of you could be new love, but it is a focus on this gift from spirit possibly your one true love, this love of a lifetime. Um, top row here is your divine counterpart, your person. Center row is your energy, lovely. Um, and the bottom row is the connection, and we're looking at past, present, future. Okay, so for your person, um, past, present, future, We've got the Hierophant, the Emperor, and the Moon. Hierophant speaks um, to the vows we make and take in life. It is around themes, around commitment. It is um, our higher self, our sense of obligation and responsibility in conventional committed relationships specifically. The Emperor in present energy here for this person, um, themes of divine masculine energy of about taking action and um, being sort of someone who is operating from the highest and best um, aspects of all four kings in um, the tarot and the moon in the near future maybe some need to count on intuition instead of falling prey to fears and insecurities for you in the past wheel of fortune in the present six of swords moving to some calmer waters some peace of mind and the death card yes some release of something that isn't serving you anymore that's in the near future but the wheel of fortune in the past is talking about um, something that has to play out in divine time, that it's sort of out of your hands and you might be feeling that energy right now in the Six of Swords. You know, it is about following your vision, but also sort of letting go a little bit and allowing this, um, this energy, this positivity to steer you towards something a little less dramatic maybe or tense or turbulent and then in the death card which isn't always about uh, something ending sometimes it's about us releasing our grip on something that um, is holding us back is keeping us in something that isn't really necessary anymore and so there's a big release um, that's, and, and then we have this growth, change, and transformation available to us. I'm gonna look at it that way in the, because of everything else that's on the table. That's why I heard somebody say that. Okay, so in the connection, in the past, the Nine of Wands, something that required some perseverance, pushing through, um, and the King of Swords right now, present energy. The King of Swords, sometimes not real warm and fuzzy, but very strategic, very much um, focused on doing the right thing, uh, coming from honor and integrity, and then in the near future, the High Priestess. 
So for some of you, there may, because we have the moon and we have the high priestess, those are very highly intuitive cards. And sometimes there's not a lot of communication when we see those energies and the death card might be um, your way of saying, well, there's nothing I, can, I have to hang on here, uh, hang on to here. So I just have to release my grip. So that's what I'm seeing so far. It seems like a mystery wrapped in a riddle. Let's just jump in. Ace of Cups. Ace of Swords. Seeing something clearly um, about this, this connection, about the opportunity for progress. That might be the wish um, fulfillment you've been seeking. I do feel like there's this opportunity, almost like it's coming in as an epiphany. Like this is the one, this is the love, this is um, the truth I needed to hear or the truth I needed to see or something that I needed revealed so that I could move forward. That's the overall energy for this reading. For your person, I wanna go uh, from the emperor to the moon, present to the future. Lovers. Page of Wands and Justice. Hmm. Extra card on the moon, please. Hermit. This person will need to take a little time to sort of sort through something that they can't see clearly. Um, but that has to come from within them. What I'm seeing here is a choice that needs to be made. The emperor taking control. Um, they, they know that they, that it's important that they make a choice. The lover's card is a card of choice and it's about this connection, choosing of their own free will and the, and seeing it very positively, even though the page of wands doesn't come through as evolved because it's a page, but there's something very um, optimistic and something very joyful and blissful and exciting when we see the Page of Wands, but underneath, justice reminds this emperor there are responsibilities, there are formalities, there are things that have to be tended to. Um, and so what we can't see, sometimes we can only attend to by um, a, a, an inner exploration. The hermit is a solitary journey and the moon sometimes is what we can't see um, within our own psyches that sort of unnerves us a little bit. So we get a little apprehensive. But I am feeling like if this person wants things to be fair, which is another part of the message of the King of Swords, wants to do the right thing, um, wants to be seen as being impartial and level and fair. Um, this justice card is also speaking to some measure of accountability to that. So even though this person is going to be operating with some measure of excitement, they also wanna do the right thing. And since they can't really tell in the near future how things might turn out, it may require them to sort of take a little time for themselves to sort through it. Yes, indeed. For those of you who are dealing with somebody who may be in another committed connection, extra added confirmation for that. I'm not getting the strongest message around that, but I'm seeing this emperor um, looking very pensive right look at the look it doesn't come through in most other decks but he's sitting there in very deep looking like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders in very deep thought um and with an important choice to make here and one part of him very excited um and enthusiastic and passionate but then internally aware of the need to be very fair and to approach this with some measure of um, rational, fair 
um, accountable to other energies that may be in the mix. That's why I'm um, saying for those of you that there may be a third party involved. Okay. So for you, um, yeah, Wheel of Fortune to the Six of Swords, past to the present. There we have the Queen of Swords now, Seven of Wands, Two of Swords, another decision to be made. Uh, Phil, your questions here were, uh, since we're coming from the past to the present, I feel your questions were about um, the resistance. I feel like you met up with some resistance from this person, the Seven of Wands. Hold on. And almost like your question is, well, are we meant to be? If I'm meeting up with so much resistance here, I have an important decision to make. And I maybe I just need to move on. Maybe I just need to kind of find my way to some peace of mind because this seems like too much of a fight, too much, too much resistance, too much defensiveness. And so that may be what um, sparked this person to go into some kind of an internal process about the choice they need to make regarding your connection, if that makes sense. So wh it, whoever this speaks to, it will make immediate sense. So let me get an extra card for you with regard to the death card. Oh. So the near future, death card with the three of swords. Um, I do feel like on some level, there is heart heaviness, feeling a need to release the connection. Um, maybe because you perceive this person uh, in their moments of silence, in their moments where they're feeling to you, um, you're perceiving them as inaccessible, um, right? Unapproachable. It's not because they are not wanting, but they're really in a deep search for understanding of, of what they need to do in this situation. But I feel like you're going to perceive it as something that's very hard to recover from. So in essence, um, yeah, three of pentacles and underneath the empress. So now we have emperor and empress. Um, may be very difficult because you're going to feel like they're not um, invested, they're not on the same page, and that it may be necessary to release them. So again, not necessarily the ending of the connection, but just a lot of heart heaviness at the sense that you need to release them because what they have, the decision and choice they have to make, you cannot help them with. They need to do it on their own. They really need to explore it. Mm -hmm. I know. So we start out with a lot of positive forward motion, progress and positivity and wish fulfillment. But by the time we get to the near future, we hit some snags um, and possibly a period of separation. The high priestess can be that. Please know we are leading up to Mercury retrograde. He will station retrograde, I think, August 5th or 6th, depending on where you live in the world. And he'll, and he'll hit that in the sign of Virgo, and this is Virgo energy. Um, and then he will backtrack back into Leo and um, back to 22 degrees of Leo and then turn around again, I think, on August, I want to say, uh, 18th or something like that three weeks later, um, so August 26th, okay? And so August, most of the month of August could be rough, and that's when this could be um, happening for you. A sense of being unmoored, let's say, communication-wise, detached. So now for the connection. The past, nine of wands, persevering, pushing through, king of swords now, 
to the high priestess. Let's focus on that, shall we? King of Swords to the high priestess. That's why you're getting the follow your vision to, because things may be unclear. Oh, wonderful. Okay. King of Swords, remember I said, not always very warm and fuzzy. Doesn't really always have a lot to say. Yep. We get some guardedness, some pulling back, some you know, blockage of the heart chakra. And it's difficult, Colt, because <coughs> it compromises this sense of ease and happiness um, and bliss that we would normally feel. It's sort of feeling compromised. And underneath is judgment, which um, wanting some form of union, reunion, reconciliation, um, second chances, forgiveness if that's part of your storyline. But what I'm seeing here is moving to some kind of retreat, some form of separation from now until the near future, possibly for some of you during the retrograde. And it will definitely compromise the sense of happiness you come into this reading with. And let me get an extra card on the High Priestess. <laughs> and it's going to take a while for this person to return. Um, more Virgo energy, by the way. So that could be, because you know that if you've, been following me for any length of time if you're new here's here's a little edumacation mercury retrograde and any retrograde really is like a three-act play right now we're in act one where it's like the pre-shadow phase where we're moving toward the retrograde but we're still in forward motion um and that began uh two weeks ago i want to say and that's the most fertile time because it tells you what territory we're going to be covering when Mercury goes retrograde. And oh, so, so when, when uh, Mercury reached 22 degrees of Leo, that's when the clock started. And he's been moving, 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 still moving forward, forward, forward. August 5th in the sign of Virgo turns around, goes backwards, 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 all the way back to 22 degrees of Leo, turns around, stations direct, and goes back over it a third and final time. But he's going to get back into Virgo. So that's what I think is when it all kind of completes and when this person may return is back in Virgo season. I usually don't talk about timing in a reading, but I'm seeing very clear signs here in the future reference for this connection that seem very connected to Mercury retrograde because um, it's been showing up in other readings as well. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a reminder of that process. And it also helps you to look at your own calendar and see, oh, wow, all right, well, this has been sort of something that's been like an Indiana Jones boulder slowly creeping up on me. And I've been knowing something's a little bit weird lately. And so now I know what to potentially anticipate. And if that boulder comes bearing down on you, it will not be as much of a surprise, but you'll also know that it, it will undo itself um, toward the end of the month of August and into September. That's what I wanted to share with you about that part of the process, uh, because it does look like there is something the Knights make offers. So something coming toward you very slowly, very intentionally, very deliberately with a plan. All right, moving slowly. So that's what I have for you for this part of the reading. I am definitely going to take it to the extended. And I uh, want to look at the emperor and dive a little deeper into what's happening behind the scenes with them, how they feel about you, their intentions. So you might be able to um, not leave this part of the reading with a whole lot of mystery. The links to that are below. I said links plural because there are a couple different ways you can get this extended and you'll see option one or two or three. Just make sure you read what it is you're, you're getting into, okay? Um, and before I give you the astrology here, also 
you know, if you enjoy this reading or you're getting something out of it or it confirms something for you or is insightful or helpful in any way and you haven't already, please subscribe below. That is how we let YouTube know that I'm here. And so they put my um, readings in front of other people like you who are just trying to get some messages and, and some help for their own connections. Okay, so that's my ask. Thank you very much. And um, here we go. Chariot is Cancerian energy. Hierophant is Taurus. The Emperor is Aries. The Lover's card is Gemini. The Page of Wands, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. A Libra here in the Justice card. The Moon is Pisces, Hermit, Virgo. Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter, which rules the sign of Sagittarius. Queen of Swords, more Libra. The Death card is Scorpio. We have the Empress, which is Venus, Taurus, and Libra. King of Swords, Aquarian energy. The Sun is the Sun, rules Leo. Judgment is Pluto, which rules Scorpio. High Priestess is the Moon. Um, Knight of Pentacles is Virgo. So that's what I have for you. Um, I'm going to take it to the extended right now. And the links are below. I'll see you there. Bye for now.